Good everyone, I hope you're having an amazing day. Um, so today I'm going to talk about asynchronous processing. Um, so this is a, a theory session uh, and in the, from the next episode we can uh, have a look at the code side of things. So I just wanted to make sure you guys understand a the concept first, then you know we can do the coding. Okay, so what is an asynchronous processing, right? So there are two kinds of processing. One is the synchronous and another one is the asynchronous processing. So <clears throat> let me uh, give you a very simple scenario. So let's say you have, um, say, a Salesforce system here, right? And you have an SAP system here, okay? Uh, just put it as SAP, okay? Now, let's say a user is uh, capturing order information in this case. Say this is an order information that's getting captured. Uh, and once the user captures the order information, uh, you know, and click on save, the order should get created uh, in SAP as well because SAP uh, will be the master data source in this case for the order management, right? Pretty simple. Now, if you want, <coughs> excuse me, if you want your order to be created on, uh, <coughs> excuse me, uh, if you want the order to be created uh, when the user click on submit right away, then the process has to be synchronous. But on the other hand, you know, you can click on save on the Salesforce side. You just don't care when that order get created on SAP. You can create an hour later or can create a 10 minutes later, right? So that kind of processing which happens behind the scene, uh, not instantaneously, that's kind of we talking about asynchronous Apex. Uh, processing okay um so if you want a uh, you know definition real definition what salesforce you know uh, put up put across uh to the rest of the world that's asynchronous process is a process or function that executes a task in the background without the user having to wait for the task to finish as a demonstrator here right in case of this a very classic example um so if you have um uh, so this is something like a, uh, you know, the request to reply integration pattern where, you know, you will actually wait uh, for the response to come back rather than fire and forget. You just do an action and, you know, it can do at its own time, right? So um, that's one of the thing aspects of asynchronous Apex processing. Um, now, asynchronous, uh, you know, uh, processing has a lot of advantage. Uh, first of all, you know, you know, you can do all the complex calculation behind the scenes. Say, for instance, like in this case, the order calculation, order management. Uh, gen sorry, in this case, the order creation, right? So, uh, so you know, in SAP side, you might have to do some kind of calculation and other stuff, right, before the order get created. So, if the if the operation is too complicated, it might take a few minutes. So, you know, so it's not a good user experience, you know, to wait the user uh, for two to three minutes to get a response back, right? So that's why asynchronous processing is very useful. Um, so that's one of the reasons why it's good to go for, you know, background processing. Uh, so you can, uh, it's scalable as well, right? And, and one of the, the positive side of using um, asynchronous processing is the higher governance limits, right? Because the asynchronous processes, they are normally operates on a, on a separate thread, uh, right? And so what that means is that it often executes uh, the stuff with the higher governor and execution limit, okay? And which is pretty fantastic in my opinion, right? Why, why won't you want a higher governor limit, right? So that's one of the advantage of having uh, asynchronous processing. Uh, so now, when you talk about asynchronous processing, right, on a Salesforce space, uh, what are we dealing with, right? You must be thinking, okay, it's all pretty cool, right? It's a fancy word. We're going to deal with asynchronous. So uh, what exactly are we talking about when it comes to asynchronous processing? Apex, especially on the Apex side. So we're going to uh, we talk about uh, the four things. Uh, first of all, that's the future method. Um, and the second one is the batch Apex. Yeah. And the third one is queuable. And yeah, I'm, I'm pretty horrible with the spelling. So my apologies if I got it wrong. I think I spell it correctly. Um, I uh, know. So it seems. Uh, okay. Yeah, I got it wrong. I think it's 
yeah I think this is perfectly correct and another one is the scheduled apex right okay so right so these are the four main aspect when it comes to apex processing asynchronous apex processing so future methods right um, the, the thing with the, the future methods is not good to call uh, the future methods inside the loop right it will hit the limit so that's a very bad practice um, so usually you know future methods you know like I said for you know in general about asynchronous processing it runs in their own thread and 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 do not start until resources are available that's pretty cool, right? Uh, so that's, in a nutshell, the future methods. I will show you, using a code, how it looks like in the next episode, okay? Now, the next one is the batch epic. So if you wanted to run, say, large jobs, right, that would exceed a normal processing limit, then the batch epic is the best option to go for, right? It's usually, you know, used if you wanted to do, uh, you know, data archiving, right, or data extraction. So, um, yeah. So now, the, the, so, you know, so if you wanted to, uh, or the data cleansing side of things, you know, in simple terms. Okay, so that's the, the batch Apex side of things. Now we come to queuable Apex, okay? Now what is the queuable Apex? Um, it's quite similar to the future methods, though, when you look at the queuable Apex. But, you know, there is a difference, okay? So because obviously if both are similar, right, then you must be, uh, you must be asking, wondering, right? Why the heck I have to worry about the cubal apex when future methods and cubal apex both mean the same, right? It's not really the case. So, so the cubal apex it provides a job chaining, and and it does allow more complex data types to be used. Whereas it's not the case with the future methods. We will see when we do the hands on. Okay. Uh, so now, what's the common scenario, right? So you must be wondering. So if you wanted to do uh, a perform a sequential processing operation uh, with an external web service, then Cubal Apex is the best choice. Okay, schedule Apex, right? Which is a name itself. You wanted to schedule, uh, you know, a batch at specific time, right? Let's say you wanted to get the data from SAP, say every uh, day at 5 p.m. You can use the schedule Apex to do so. You know, you can also do the daily or weekly, right? If you wanted to do every hour, you have to uh, write, uh, you have to use cron expression, okay? So that there, there are different ways you can do uh, scheduling. So I'm just talking about out-of-box context, right? So you can do daily, once a, once a day, or weekly, right? So that's, uh, that's around the... Um, the schedule side. Now, you know, you do know, right? I mean, Salesforce is a, is a multi-tenant environment, right? So, so asynchronous processing has advantage. That means that it will ensure the fairness of, fairness of processing, means it, it will make sure that every customer gets a fair share of processing resources, okay? Which is fantastic, right? Otherwise, imagine, right? One customer gets all the resources, other customer gets stuck, right? just sucks at the end of the day but that's not the case with the Salesforce. it's pretty cool it does ensure the fault tolerance it's one of the you know it takes care of the fault tolerance so because you know imagine if your request you know getting lost because of the fault it's not a really great sign right but Salesforce takes care of it there is no uh, asynchronous uh, request that's been made getting lost due to the fault. It's not the case. And you can also, you know, the, the put the request in the key because, and the queue, right? As the resource gets available, your request get processed and it does the job, right? In the same way, you can dequeue your resource uh, request as well. So that's in a nutshell, um, you know, I just wanted to talk about, you know, uh, asynchronous processing. Just one more thing. You need to understand that asynchronous processing has a lower priority than the real-time interaction, okay, with the browser and API. So that's the one thing you have to keep into consideration. It always gets lower priority, right? So, so yeah, that's 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 pretty much I wanted to talk about in a nutshell about asynchronous processing before we get into, you know, the real code side of things, which is fun and and interesting, right? Uh, so, see you next time. Have a great day. Adios.